Hello and welcome to EV Motoring. I'm Joe and it's time for an epic below zero cold weather range test of our brand new 2025 Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive long range. All right, here in the 2025 Tesla Model Y long range rear wheel drive, we were charged up to 100%. We just preconditioned the car, still have the charger running, but it's pulling a little more power than the charger's putting in. We're down to 99%. If I tap on that, it shows us we have the 335 miles of rated range right now. I went ahead in here into the car's uh, autopilot. I turned it to traffic aware cruise control so I can set the speed at 75 miles per hour. And then I came down to trips. I got a range test in here that I'm going to reset right now. So now we have that. I clicked show in cards. So we have that down here. So I think we're ready to go unplug and hit the road and see just how far this Model Y can go. I'm going to show a rolling screen every uh, 10% as well as I'll check in every 25%. A couple other uh, facts to point out. Have the climate at 72 degrees as I have in all my other tests. I have the seat down to level one, turning off the heated steering wheel. So that will match every other vehicle I've done. And fan speed is on low already more comfortable than in here than when I did the uh, Chevy this morning. It's one degree right now. It's going to drop to just below zero during this test. But either way, let me go not stop wasting time, go and unplug and uh, hit the road and see how far we can go. We have about a two mile drive to the highway. Just merged on the highway, wanted to point a couple extra things out that I don't think I mentioned earlier. We do a 75 mile per hour range test. That's because a lot of other people do 70 mile per hour range test here in the Midwest and then out into the West. The speed limits are typically 75 or even sometimes 80. So 75 in my opinion is a much more accurate of uh, uh, what people drive, at least in the Midwest here. You know, whatever range I come up with here in these conditions, you can always slow, slow it down a little bit. You'll get a little bit more range out of it. So. That's just what we've used in our test before. Uh, also wanted to point out, I did this exact same test this morning. It was negative 12 degrees at the coldest point in our 2025 Chevy Equinox LT all-wheel drive. So it is the all-wheel drive versus this is the rear wheel drive, but still very, uh, com very competitive segment between the two. Chevy does come in a little bit more affordable, but uh, be sure to comment down below which vehicle you think will win this range test between the two of them. And also comment down below how far you think this, uh, how far you think the Model Y will make it. it. Through the magic of editing, I will overlay a map right now of our route. Always have used the same route for all of our range tests. I go out towards Rockford and then either north or south from there. And then at 50%, I turn around and come home. We have a 10 mile per hour wind from the west or northwest. So right now that is a headwind, but when we turn around, ideally we'll gain as much of that back as possible. I tried to get the most calm conditions uh, that I could get, but we only get a couple days a year that are this cold where I can properly um, test the cold temperature. So doing the loop test does, it's, does the best job I can to negate that 10 mile per hour wind. just ticked down to 75%. One thing I want to point out is the tire pressure monitor system came on. So when I swipe over here, it shows that uh, we have, you know, just about 36 or 37 in each tire. But now I'll quickly show, I actually uh, took a picture of this like a day ago before I put the car outside to charge and tire pressures were fine. So that's just a result of how much the cold air literally affects your pressure. because. Literally this picture was yesterday. And now today, you know, being 40 degrees colder being, or 50 degrees colder being outside instead of in a garage, that's a, <laughs> a pretty sharp drop off. 
um, you know, of losing like four or five PSI. Anyway, 75%, we've made it 42 miles, used 18 kilowatt hours of energy, and we're running at 429 watt hours per mile. I'll put the conversion down below to change that to miles per kilowatt hour. Either way, uh, not so bad to start with. It looks like we're gonna get, I would estimate around 170, 180, especially once we turn around, we get that tailwind for a little bit. And, you know, I think it's, uh, given the conditions, it's a usable car, especially with how fast the charging curve is, which by the way, that is uh, where I plan to end this video. I'm trying to make it to a supercharger right by my house. That is a 250 unit. So I'll, I'm not going to precondition. In order to not precondition, I'm not going to route the car to that destination. I'm gonna route it to like a Panera Bread or something that's in the same parking lot. Reason being, you'll see the car will not charge as good as it could because it won't have it won't precondition. But when we're trying to do a range test like this, I want to be able to contribute as much energy as possible to the distance we cover and not spend any energy heating the battery for a good charging session. So it'll, I'll also kind of try to highlight, I'm assuming it'll not be a great charge session. So we'll point out how much better it would have been had we preconditioned, knowing that the top speed on this car for uh, charging is 250 kilowatt hour, kil uh, kilowatts. So either way, uh, yeah, we'll check back in at around 50% when we're turning around and see where we're at then. Just got to Janesville, Wisconsin. We're at 51%, so I'm working on getting back on the highway right now as a quick off and on turnaround, so that no time, no, no time, no miles wasted here. We, um, so I've gone, it's 51% remaining. I've made it 87 miles, used 36 kilowatt hours of energy. We are uh, using 413 watt hours per mile. Again, I'll convert that down below to miles per kilowatt hour. It's weird for me driving with just regular cruise control in this car. I've had the full self-driving uh, for the whole time we've owned it, so I'm just used to pretty much the next step of auto, the better version of autopilot, basically. And even when we won't, when we run out of full self-driving, we'll still use autopilot. So it's weird having to steer on the highway in a Tesla. I haven't really ever experienced that because even in my t my Tesla, I had. Uh, autopilot on pretty much all the time. Anyway, I set the navigation to the Meyer in Rolling Meadows, Illinois. It is 86 miles away. It estimates we'll get there with 4%, so we'll see uh, how accurate that is as well. We just got back to 75 miles an hour here on the highway. On the energy screen, it shows that we've consumed almost 50%, shows how much is being used for driving, and also has some tips saying that if we stayed below 70 miles an hour, we would save around 4%. Um, it estimates that the climate control has cost us basically 14% on this drive. So over 14%. So that shows how important <laughs> the, or how much the cold weather impacts range. Well, another thing that's interesting is when you go to the consumption screen, it'll estimate how much range we have remaining. So based on our driving, it estimates we can make it about 100 miles compared to the car's gasometer that says we have 167 miles. And that's why I always like to keep it at percentage. We're down at 49% right now. And you know, when the gasometers in some cars, they are accurate, so I'll give it that. But in most cars, they are not. And that can just give you a false sense of security when you think you can make it somewhere and you can't. So use the percentages uh, and then you can just you do, do quick calculations based on what your efficiency's been to know whether you're gonna make it to your destination or not. Obviously the in the Teslas, they have a really good guessometer as well that, or not guessometer, but estimated arrival percentage that's in the navigation. Those are incredibly accurate, at, at least when, uh, when I had my Model 3, it was very accurate and I would assume it'd be no different with the Model Y here. But we'll check back in at 25% and see how we're doing. This is also a great time for me to point out if you're enjoying this content, 
please do like and subscribe. Uh, it helps the channel reach more people and helps more people learn about how this car performs in these conditions, as well as many other reviews that we do. And if you're considering getting a Tesla, please consider using my referral link. Uh, it's in the description. It helps our channel out a bunch. Or if you know somebody else that has a Tesla and you wanna use their referral link, either way, you save money and uh, we make a little bit of money off of it. So really appreciate it. Uh, if, you can, if you did buy a Tesla, if you used our referral link, we'd really appreciate that a lot. Thank you. to 25% now. It is now zero degrees outside. As I mentioned earlier, it's supposed to drop to below zero by the time this uh, route is done. But either way, very cold. Actually, the uh, an interesting thing is the navigation now shows the weather. It says it's negative one degrees in Rolling Meadows, Illinois right now. We are projected to make it with, I believe, 8%. We'll see if we'll do some, uh, skip our exit and go a little bit further, just to stretch it a little bit more. So far, we have gone 139 miles, used 55 kilowatt hours of energy, averaging 395 watt hours per mile. I'll put the conversion down below. Uh, so basically just over, I think that's around like 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So it looks like we'll actually beat my original estimate. I was thinking we'd be around 160 to 170, uh, between 160 and 170 miles. It looks like we'll actually get closer to 180 or 190 miles of range out of a full charge uh, in these zero degree con uh, conditions. So I will uh, check back in in a little bit. I'm gonna try, I think, to go one exit further and then loop back. That'll add about, I think, like five miles to the journey. We'll see. I might not try to push it, though, because in in warm weather, I will run a Tesla down to 1%, you know, even 0% at times. But in cold weather, there have been cases where at like 5%, the car will shut down and think that it's out of energy. It, you, you just don't want to push it that far in these conditions because everything is stressed a little bit more. And if the car is just a little bit off on how much charge is in the battery, it may shut down on you. And then I, last thing I want to do when it's zero degrees outside is be stranded. So always better to play a little bit, a little bit safe when you're dealing with these conditions. exiting off the highway now with 8%. We have a little over a mile to go to go until uh, the supercharger. As I mentioned, I did not precondition, so I'll show how the charging experience is there. We have currently made it 175 miles and used 68 kilowatt hours of energy. We averaged 387 watt hours per mile. So the efficiency ended up getting uh, quite a bit better as we continued. Once we turned around and had the wind pushing us, obviously made a big difference. Another thing to note here is our power is restricted. So if I step on a little bit, you'll see that's really all it's got. You can see the little uh, the little dots here on the top are showing that we do not have full power right now. See here that uh, dr driving used obviously the vast majority of energy. Uh, shows here, where we go, 29% of our energy used was for climate control. So pretty substantial uh, effect. That shows how substantial the effect of the outdoor weather is. This shows our consumption that we, it estimates we could possibly have about 15 miles of range left. Another thing to highlight is this supercharger location has about 20 chargers and they are all full because of this cold weather that we have here. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in and see what kind of speeds we get. Charging ramping up right now. We got to 132 kilowatts, 133 kilowatts. Being a full supercharger, there could be some limits there, but I would bet 
the majority of limits is due to not preconditioning the battery. It eventually worked its way up to 144 and holding steady there. So 176 miles that we've traveled, again, 68 kilowatt hours used. And being that we arrived with a seven to 8%, I would say it's fair to, it, it's definitely fair to estimate we would have made it to 180, possibly 185, but being, we can be conservative and say it was 180 miles that we reached, would have reached out of this charge safely. So thank you so much for watching. If you found, th found this content helpful, please do like and subscribe. It helps the video reach more people. Leave a comment down below. Do you think the Equinox EV will do better than this Tesla right here? And uh, take care until next time.